why I keep coming back to Mexico City. Now, I made some notes for this, so bear with me because I wanted to prepare for this and tell you why I keep coming back here. So I have a couple questions that I made up and I'm, I will be answering. So, okay. First of all, I'd just like to say uh, I've been living in Mexico City for, this is my seventh month in a row. And yeah, I, I just love living here for multiple reasons. Um, uh, cost of living, activities, culture, the food is, pro I wouldn't say the food is the main reason, but the food's pretty good. Um, dog culture, uh, you know, just the workout culture that is here. And I'll go, o I'll go over all this um, on this video. And we'll just go right through this. And you guys are going to see from an entrepreneur perspective, because I think with Mexico City, um, you could easily move here and have a great life. So by you being able to make the money that you make in America and live here at the same time, you're able to uh, pretty much afford double the lifestyle. Now, I don't have any issues with money at this point in my career, but when I first started, I definitely wanted to save money. And I still, whenever I go back to the States, I hate, even though I could probably live in the best neighborhoods, I still hate spending the amount of money that I spend in the United States. So it's pretty interesting. But let's go through a couple of these questions that I made and I'll just, you know, go right through this stuff and try and get through this as fast as possible and get to the point so you guys, um, you know, so you guys can really understand where I'm coming from here. Okay. So, all right. The first time you were in Mexico City, I actually came here about two and a half years ago and I came here for three months. I lived in Roma. It was like amazing because... Um, Roma's, Roma's gorgeous. The area I'm in is very gorgeous as well, but uh, everything, there's vegetation everywhere and it's just nice. I mean, you just see green all around you in this city. So, you know, I just like how there's just so many trees here and it's very cool. So, um, and, and it's just, yeah. So anyways, that's like one of the really cool parts about it as well. And especially, I just got introduced to like the fitness um, culture here in Mexico City, in Roma especially, and um, it was just, you know, there's so many parks you can go to to work out at, there's so many dog parks you can go to and hang out at as well, so those are like, when I first came here right off the bat, I was like, damn, this is crazy, and you know, just automatically I was in this location, in the States, it's kind of like, there is all that stuff, but it's, I don't know how to explain it. It's just so different here. Um, you don't find, I guess the collectivism is a lot better here. In my opinion, the collectivism is a lot better here. And I believe that like the culture is very family oriented. So it's, to me, it's easier to be around people here in Mexico. Okay. How many times have you visited this place. I have been to Mexico City about five times. I would come here for first time I came here for three months. The second time I came for like one month. The third time was a weekend. And then this last time was six months. And then I just recently came back. So, um, you know, I've been here six times. Honestly, I love this place. So um, that's why I'm here. Cost of living. When I look, okay, so I'm going to um, bring up some numbers here so you guys can understand okay let's just go with rent okay i use airbnb and i probably could probably save a lot more money but i just don't go through the work to do that i should though but the kind of airbnbs that like this is a four-story house with a with a um, terrace on top and uh, probably something like this would cost like i would say seven thousand dollars in the states maybe eight and i am paying about four so the rent is half right for four or five but you know i'm even looking right here and i'm seeing 
you know, I'm doing monthly on an Airbnb. So my, and they really, they really try and make money on Airbnb out here. So I'm sure I'm paying a lot more than I should, but I'm looking rent per month in the States. Um, if I, like I said, if I rented something like this, it would cost a lot more. I know that for a fact. Um, if I look at the rent here compared to the States, okay, let's look here. One bedroom here on average is $500 a month. One bedroom in the States on average is 1,700. So, I mean, right there, it just goes to show you triple the cost in the States. And um, just that, you're just like, wow, that's crazy. Like you could save a lot. If you come here, do research, find a good landlord and um, you know, uh, do a six month lease. I would suggest do a six month lease because you probably only can stay here for six months at a time. And um, yeah, just do like a little lease and set yourself up. Next time I come back here, I'm actually going to South America for a month. So when I come back, I want to try to negotiate like a six month lease and try and do that uh, some way. So anyways, as you could see, the cost of living for an entrepreneur would dramatically change. It's great. I mean, would you rather pay 500 versus 1,700? Obviously, you're going to be like, yeah, I'd rather just pay 500. Now, the cool thing is that the quality, in my opinion, is um, better when it comes to, you know, your bang for your buck. So I could get something really nice here. Um, and versus when I go to the States, uh just like even the like the decorations uh, the style i guess you could say the architecture right to me it's better you know i think uh in the states you get a lot of this like plain jane type of construction and i could be wrong here but that's just how i feel like i in the states you just kind of get this like plain jane kind of construction that is very boxy and not very interesting. Whereas when you come to some place like Mexico City, all the buildings are different and they're made in different years. So the architecture is different in every place that you go to, which to me is pretty fucking cool. Cause uh, they even like, you know, every part of the city is different. That's what they say here. So um, anyway, so yeah, okay. Cost of, so we went over cost of living is cheap. If you're an entrepreneur and you have a business that you can run online and you're working in America, book yourself a ticket and come here. Um, highly suggest it. Quality of life's better. Multiple other things is better here as well. Okay. Um, what keeps you coming back to Mexico City? I think I already talked about this, but just greenery, working out, and the lifestyle here. My lifestyle here is a lot different. Um, I'm very active and it's uh, the weather is very nice. So it's easy to go out and enjoy yourself. So like you can do, there's so many things to do here. There's so many different activities that you can do here as well. And uh, we can talk about that on another video. But um, yeah, so, okay. Favorite places to go to. I have a place that I like to go to, Parque Mexico. It's a uh, very nice place. I'll put some clips of you know me boxing there and you know me working out there as well. Parks here are fucking gorgeous. Everyone, like I was saying earlier, every park is different. Today I went to this park that was like Japanese. The parks in this in these areas are like Japanese style, and um, so I went to this like very Japanese area. And the cool thing about the parks here is that they have gyms and dog parks. Uh, they have a lot of gyms and dog parks, so outdoor gyms. So you can literally, you don't need a, a gym. So you don't need a gym membership. You could just go to the park. You could just go outside, which, um, you know, I do a lot of boxing now. And honestly, I just like going to the park and working out over weights you know at this point because i box um i don't do as much weight training as i used to but 
I do love, I love doing body weight. So I can just go to the park and work out and do what I need to do if I want to. Food's great, tacos, quesadillas. I would say Peru definitely has better food, but I would say for the most part here in Mexico City, there's variety. Like yesterday, me and my girl went to a, actually this area has multiple Argentina uh, restaurants here. So it's like, um, it's interesting. Uh, the different places to eat here. There's there's variety, and there's a lot there's a lot of stuff in Roma, uh, closer to Parque Mexico. I'm about 20 minutes away. Um, I am in. Where am I? I forgot what neighborhood this. What is it? Oh, Coyacan, Coyacan. So I'm in Coyacan right now, and. Um, there is like a lot of like Argentinian restaurants here that are very, it's very tasty. So I like that. That's another thing I really like here is like, there's so much, there's so much um, variety when it comes to eating as well. So you can do, there's definitely Mexican, but there's like Argentinian, there's Peruvian, there's multiple, and there's even American food here. So there's multiple things that you can eat here as well that uh, is very close by, especially in Roma, Condesa, Coyacan. Um, this general area uh, is very, you know, nice to go to. Um, activities I enjoy, okay. The favorite places that I like to go, the activities that I enjoy, we'll put those together. I love to go to the park. Like I said, Parque Mexico, all the parks. We literally went to two different parks today just to kind of, uh, we wanted to walk Zeus, but we were just like, you know, trying to, um, you know, go to as many different parks because like every park has its own characteristics that we like to see. So um, it's cool because it's just, Every park is different. Everything has its own mood. Like we went to a park that had a trampoline in it today. And Matt, like a lot of dogs and like just, it looked like a damn, it looked like a forest with like a trampoline in there. And there's like statues in the middle and you know, a bunch of dogs there. So like, it was just so cool, honestly. And when you're here, you'll find you'll find that you'll you'll see multiple different kinds of parks, and um, like I said, every park's different. But okay, so favorite places to go? I like to go to the parks. I like to go to the malls. Another cool thing about living in Mexico City, especially near Roma and Condesa, is um, there's multiple malls here that are actually good, and um, I would say that. Uh, there's great variety when it comes to malls. I remember when I was in Medellin, there was like four malls that, you know, I wouldn't say there was much variety, but here, like every neighborhood has its own mall. And the reason why I like that is because um, every mall has its own style too here, which is um, really cool. Like, a lot of malls that you see, they all look alike. For me, I, I feel like um, here, the, all the malls have like their own personality and their own style. So, um, yeah. So what other places I like to go? Uh, there's actually a great, um, uh, it's called Chapultepec Bosque. Let me make sure I got that right. But basically it's a big, um, what would you call that? Bosque. Yeah, it's a forest. Chapultepec Forest. Okay, so Chapultepec Forest. Okay, and that's um Bosque de, Ch de Chapultepec. This place is gigantic. They have like the best um, museum in there the number one museum in Mexico, I want to say. And um, they have, I think it's the Museum of Anthropology. 
Yeah, that's a cool one. We went to that one uh, three days ago. But, like, you can bicycle in there. There's, like, a bunch of, like, uh, street food in there. Like, there's a whole row of street food. There's a literal... There's a zoo in there. I haven't been to the zoo, but there's a literal zoo in there. And Chapultepec, I'm reading about it right now. It's a urban forest. So, it's a forest that's in you know, an urban place. And that is like one of the things that I would say about Mexico City is urban, but it's very, you know, there's forests everywhere. So um, <clears throat> that's why I really like it. You know, there's, so anyways, I like to go there. I ride my bike there. Uh, we rode our bikes there one time. We just did general walking. There's a lot of different variety of food. There's like roller coasters in there and different um attractions to like do um there's museums in there there's uh i think they have a castle in there i believe there's a castle in there as well that they have but it's just like this big uh gigantic forest with a zoo you know multiple things in there that you can do and you you literally can't do everything in one day like it would be impossible because there's so many things that you can do in this forest right so i like to go there uh i highly suggest that you go okay how are the people in the culture i would say for the most part mexicans are pretty nice They're very hard working one of the cool things i like um whenever you sit down to eat People always say provecho, which means enjoy. And, uh, you know, you don't even know them, but they say provecho, provecho, which means enjoy. So they'll, they'll, and I'll give you like an example. Like one time me and my girl, we were just having, you know, one of the uh, tacos, street food, and you can sit down because they like have tables and you sit down. And I just remember, uh, you know, these two gentlemen just come walking by i guess they just were finishing up their work or their lunch break or something and they just look over uh, to us and they say provecho and, and i noticed that they do that at all the restaurants i remember um the family next to us yesterday got up and they said provecho which means enjoy and they didn't know us we never talked to them we never said anything but that's like the kind of culture that they have here when it comes to eating, they always tell each other, enjoy your food, enjoy your food. It's like what they do. So I thought that that was pretty cool. And I would say, yeah, generally, um, the Mexican people are very nice. And, um, you know, I don't, you know, there's nothing. I can't really say that I've had, you know, I would say that I haven't really had any bad experiences here. What I do notice is that Mexicans work so hard, you know, whether they're, you know, doing the, you know, a street vendor, whatever they do, they, they do. If they're in the street selling candy, you know, they're pushing it to the limit. So I would say, you know, to me, from my point of view, the Mexican people work very hard and um, they love their country. Okay. I want to go through this so you have enough information so that you can live here as an entrepreneur. That's my goal here, to inspire entrepreneurs to come here and live here and really enjoy life. Like I could really say like this is really the first time where I had like a really good routine and enjoy my life. Boxing, I've done salsa classes, I've done just like multiple activities, go to the park, hang out go to the bars at night. I mean, there's just so much to do here. And with the cost of living, it's easy to do all that stuff. And it's easy to really afford, you know, a great lifestyle out here. So I want to really tell you about Mexico City so entrepreneurs can come here and um, give business to the local restaurants and bars and stuff. And I want to inspire you to live a better life. How does Mexico City influence your well-being or your physical mental health? I would say because there's so many forests around here and greenery that like it's that's the reason why I came back here is strictly because 
I just felt at peace here and I was able to work out outside, you know, uh, in peace. You know, you can't do that. I mean, you can do that in Tampa, but it's crazy hot. Here it's really cool and you're in a forest like 24-7. Uh, it says, are there any people in Mexico that have influenced your life? Obviously, my coach has really influenced my life. Um, he was, uh, you know, boxer, four-time champion, actor in Netflix, motivational speaker for boxing uh, unions and universities, did multiple things, played professional soccer, <coughs> professional football, uh, like American football and soccer. He played professional, both those. Um, and, you know, he really inspired me. He really inspires me every single day. So I work with him about four days a week, boxing. We're doing sparring. And, yeah, we're thinking, you know, we're going to be doing a, a fight, you know, in a year after after a year of training. We, Me and him want to look at possibly doing an amateur fight. So that's our next goal. Okay, how likely would I recommend this place for, from an entrepreneur's lens? Like I said, guys, we went over um, <clears throat> culture and cost of living. I would say based on the culture and the cost of living, because as an entrepreneur, you need to really take care of your mental well-being. And I would say place really, you can really take advantage of it take advantage of those different things like going to the park and working out because it's so easy to do. It doesn't cost anything. All you got to do is go outside and you're in beauty. You know what I'm saying? But all you got to do is walk to the park and use the park workout stuff. Or you can just work out at the park either way, you know. So it's very easy and accessible to do it. There's parks ev Literally, there's parks everywhere. <clears throat> so... If you have a dog, there's dog parks everywhere. Dog culture here is just amazing. You know, there's multiple dog parks everywhere. Uh, I'm actually, that's the reason why I bring Zeus here was because of the dog culture. I would say socializing Zeus at a young age from the time to where he is to right now, he's one years old. And he has literally, he's been able to, like when I see him socialize with dogs, he can socialize with big dogs and like get along with them. And it's just like the way he does it is so interesting because I see other dogs and they're like getting fights with these big violent dogs. For some reason, my uh, my Zeus, my, my Husky, he's just able to like <clears throat> go up to, I guess you could say violent dogs and like not push, the, like push their buttons, but not push their buttons and do it just enough to where eventually they become friends. So I would say like if you have a dog and you want like them to socialize, like it's easy to do it here. There's a lot of dog schools and a lot of dog trainers <clears throat> to um, to pick from here. And I would say like, that's another reason why I would say Roma is very a uh, chill place. Okay, Spanish speaking, okay. Um. The people here, in my experience, a lot of them do speak English. So when I was in, let's say, Colombia, Medellin, Lima, um, Ecuador, Costa Rica, Panama, I would say that I had more trouble there speaking with people, you know, because I know Spanish, but I don't know it to like a full, you know, I'm not completely... Um, I'm not completely, uh, uh, what's it called? Were you, um, I'm not completely um, literate. I don't know how to say it. I don't know. I forgot the word. But I don't know Spanish to the point where I, um, like, it's, like, truly a second language. I know enough to where I can get around. I can make jokes. Um, but a lot of things just get lost in translation for me. Now, the cool thing here is that there's a lot of people that actually speak English. So um, that's a really cool thing. I mean, that's a really nice thing. Like literally, if I have trouble, I just literally go up to somebody and say, hey, do you speak English? And like in my, in my experience, probably five out of 10 people usually say yes. So that's a really cool thing, okay?
Let's talk about the methodology on traveling and doing my business. So my methodology has always been um, travel and really capitalize, you know. I like that YouTube channel that uh, they're called the Nomad Capitalists. And I like their take on things because they think let's make as much money as we can from whatever country we're working in. And let's travel the world or let's go to places where we can invest our money and um, use it better or go to places where they treat us better. Right. And I 100 percent believe in that. You know, my methodology on being an entrepreneur and and traveling is not like the normal person would be like, I, I don't want to like I don't want to um, live in hostels and party every single day. Like, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to find the cheapest rooms to live in to live in like i want to travel and live in excellence you know and um that's just like that's my methodology versus a lot of people what they do is they travel and they waste all their money and they spend a bunch of money and then they're like fuck i gotta go back to the united states and i gotta work again so my methodology was always to travel and really capitalize when you're out of the country and just make it a way of life and, you know, go to places where your dollar is, uh, carries, you know, is, is, uh, has more power. So that is like, um, that's my methodology when it comes to traveling. And I really don't even like to do tourist things. Like I really, I really could care less about those things. You know, I might do them three or four times, you know, you know, I might take, like a week to do all the tourist stuff, but that stuff just gets old. To me, the cool parts is actually getting to know the people and like figuring out like, you know, their, their culture and the routines that people do and going to the gym, meeting people at the gym, going to like, you know, per places that I'm interested, like boxing, meeting people at the park, you know, like going to those places and like meeting people while I'm there and like developing a routine you know, that's, um, I like to do that versus like go to Cancun and fucking party all night and, you know, get wasted. Like I want to like, I don't want to party like, like that. I want to make a lot of money, have a holistic lifestyle where I can take off any day that I want to. I don't need a party to like <clears throat> validate myself. I don't need like, I don't need partying to like Oh, this is the pinnacle of life. Like I could go party on a Monday, Tuesday, or a Friday. You know what I'm saying? Like I even prefer to party on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday if I do go out. You know. So like that's like my methodology on traveling and doing business. I want to create a lifestyle that I could do whatever I want, whenever I want. And if at any time I want to just take a, a shot and just go, uh, you know, literally, if I just want to take a shot and party for like the next couple hours, I can. It could be in the morning, it could be in the middle of the day. You know, obviously I don't do that much, but I want to make my lifestyle that way. So that's my methodology when it comes to traveling. You know, I want to create a routine that... Um, build my life, but also like is a lot of fun, right? So what is that going to take? It's going to take you outsourcing and keeping your, uh, you know, you know, being clear on what you like to do. And I would say if you're an entrepreneur, that if, um, if you're looking to develop like hobbies, I would say Mexico City is the perfect place to do that. One, because the cost of living, but two, there's so many things to do here like if you're if you want to just like work out more and you want to go outside more like come to mexico city i think that you'll really like it anyway so that's pretty much it guys um you know i would say this is my this has been my favorite place to live here so far of all the nine countries i've been to in the last three years um you know you know, that, like, this is literally, like, where I, you know, I like to, this is the place where I actually like to live, so I've been here for seven months, and, you know, this beats Medellin, this beats, you know, a lot of different places, so, 
Panama was really nice. I'm not going to lie. Panama City was very nice. Panama was, you know, the people are very cool. But, you know, the city's small. So I don't know if I can live there for three to six months. What I like to do is whenever I travel, I like to live there for at least three months or six, preferably six. You know, three, if I really like it, I'll expand it to six. But I like to go places where I can, you know, really take in the lifestyle. So that is um, what I like to do, you know. So uh, I don't like to rush any of my traveling. So when I travel, I'm not like, oh my God, I gotta make sure I get everything out of it. First, I develop my routine. And then from there, I make sure like work's done, the working out's done, and all the, um, all the important stuff with health, is it's all figured out and done. And then um, after that, that's when I worry about, not even worry about, but that's what I, you know, the next level of important stuff gets done. And then, you know, you know, partying is like probably the last thing I figure out. You know, I'm not the type of person to go that go there and be like, dude, let's fucking party, man. Like, it's, you know, it's time to party, you know. I mean, when I was younger, I guess you could say I would do that. But at this point... I like to create a life where I don't feel like I have to party. Like my life is already interesting. And I think that if you're looking for that kind of lifestyle where, you know, there's a lot to do, 